This is huge. Can Assistance API replace Autogen? Can we create user proxy agents and other agents in Assistance API? I created a similar kind of setup using Assistance API and I was able to create charts like this, code like this, and it was able to execute these files. That's exactly what we're going to see today. Assistance API functionality similar to Autogen. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm really excited to show you about Assistance API with user proxy and a coding agent. This is going to run similar to Autogen where it can create files, run the files and give us the output. I'm going to take you through step by step on how we can build this so that you can extend this further. Before going into that, I regularly create videos on my YouTube channel in regards to artificial intelligence. So do subscribe and stay tuned. Coming to Assistance API, we will use the function calling ability. We create an assistant first, then we create a thread, then we add a message to the thread, and finally we run with get stock price function calling. I've already covered this in a previous video, which I will link that in the description below. We are going to extend this further to add agents. This is the setup we are going to create. First, we are going to create coding agent, which has the capability to save code in a file and also run the file. Next, we are going to create user proxy agent. This can provide instruction to the coding agent to perform a task. First, let's create the coding agent. Coming to the code, I'm going to rename this as coding agent. It's advanced programming AI. Your expertise lies in developing precise Python scripts. Ensure that the files are aptly named and Python code is meticulously crafted with necessary imports. Execute required code prior to providing a response to the user. That's the prompt we provide. Now we need to create two tools. One is save code in file and then run the file. To do that, we need to change this tools list. Currently, the tools list contains get stock price and the function is get stock price. Now we are going to delete this function and then create create file function. This function will receive a file name and a body text. The body text will be going inside the file and saving it. Next, we are going to run the file. Here, we are using sub process. At the top, we are going to import sub process, import sub process and sub process dot run and it will automatically run the file which was created in the previous stage. Now we have created two functions, create file and run file. Now we need to create the custom function definition similar to this. I've created that now. So the type is function and the function name is a run file. File name is the input parameter. And similarly, we created a create file function. In this, file name and body are the required parameters. Now we're going to assign this tools list to the coding assistant. Here we got assigned the tools. And now the coding assistants have the ability to save the file and also run the file. And now we are going to create a function called execute and we are going to move the message run and every other thing inside that. So I'm going to select that and click the tab. So whenever an assistant, a thread, a query and a function is passed, this will automatically perform the action and return the response. So I'm going to change the query here in the content. And similarly, I'm going to remove this stock price function. We'll be creating the similar structure soon. And in the status completed, instead of breaking it, I'm going to return it for message in messages.data, return the text value if the role is user. That's it, few changes in the function. Now we are going to move this creating a coding assistant and the thread inside the main function. So coming to the bottom, if, if name equals main, we are pasting that code. Now we have just restructured the code, keeping the coding assistant and the thread in the main function and remaining everything in a separate function so that we can call whenever required. Now coming to the user proxy, we need to create a user proxy agent and also we need to create a function called provide instruction. Providing instruction function is for providing instruction to the coding agent to perform a task. Here I'm creating user proxy equals the client.beta.assistance.create user proxy agent. Your role as a user proxy agent is to facilitate smooth communication between the user and other agents. We have created a user proxy now. Now we need to create a function called provide instruction and define the function calling definition. I'm going at the top, define provide instruction and passing the query. And then we are defining the list of agents. And in this case, we are using a coding assistant and we are passing assistant thread and the function. Query is the instruction from the user proxy agent and it will activate the coding assistant 
to perform the functions using the query it sends. For the first time, if the coding assistant doesn't have a thread, it will automatically create a thread in this line. We need to define a global agent at the top. Agents equals an empty bracket. Now we need to define user proxy tools list, which has the type function and the name provide instruction and the only required field is query. Now we need to pass this tools list to the user proxy. Comma tools equals user proxy list. Now we have also created user proxy agent with provide instruction function. Now we need to initiate the chat. To do that, I'm going to define the list of functions, which is run file and create file. Then I'm going to define the agents list, which is coding assistant with the agent, coding agent, thread is none and the functions. We can create multiple agents in this list. Now I'm creating only one agent. Here you can see how far it can be extended. Now I'm going to get an input from the user while true query input is user and then user proxy functions is provide instruction. Next, we are asking it to execute with the user proxy thread, the query and the user proxy function. And this is the first step. That's it. As a quick summary, first step, we have created coding assistant with two tools. One is to create file. Another one is to execute file functions. Next, we created user proxy. This user proxy is capable of activating this coding agent using the provide instruction function. Inside the provide instruction, the coding assistant agent is activated by the execute function. So it's an execution within another execution. User proxy itself an execution and that user proxy is again executing one more time and then it's returning the message. That's it. Now we can run the code in your terminal python agents.py and click enter. Plot a chart of apple stock price and save it to stock underscore price dot png and click enter. Now we can see the status got queued. It's function calling with the arguments query and the provide instruction. Unfortunately, I cannot execute Python scripts myself. Maybe we might need to change the prompt slightly. I'm going to try and see. I'm going to cancel this. Here it says runs a Python script. I'm going to change that to execute and running that again. Typing the same prompt again. Now I can see the create file function got triggered. That means a file will get created stock price underscore plot dot py, which we can see that here on the left hand side. And I can see the code as well. I can see a big back and forth conversation between those agents. I got a response here that it was not able to perform the action. But I can see at least the file got created. Maybe because the pandas data reader is not there, it was not able to perform the task. I'm going to try that again. Try again with few imports. This is capable of remembering the previous conversation. Now I can see another file got created, ticker apple. It's saving to the CSV file. And inside the CSV file, I can see all the date, open, high, low, close, dividends, etc. I can see now the time series plot got created. We can see the code here now. And also I can see the image got created. Apple stock price, the chart. That is brilliant. Imagine how far this could go. That's it. As simple as that. Now you can extend this further with proper prompting using Pydantic. I will create more advanced tutorial in regards to this by implementing Pydantic and other tools. I will also create more videos in regards to assistance API. So stay tuned. If you want me to present your work, you can submit your work to mer.van slash submit work. I hope you like this video. Do like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching.